the fear of psychosis? Well, I, I certainly think it has been used to warn people away. I mean, that's what was we were told is you'll lose your mind. And I remember when I was first, when I was a proselytizing 19-year-old having taken my first LSD trip and then I went home for Christmas convinced that I would turn my parents <laughs> on and I just realized uh, these people don't want to do this because they know they're crazy. That is the bottom line. They actually know it. They're comfortable with it. They, they don't want to mess with their minds because they sense the fragileness of it all. Yeah, I think it was Tim Leary who said uh, LSD is a drug which occasionally causes psychotic reactions in people who haven't taken it. Uh, that, was certainly, that was certainly the case in my family. I mean, all you had to do was mention it, and people would hit the ceiling and begin twitching, and uh, their eyes would roll back and uh, say, my goodness, this is a powerful concept. Uh, this, this question of, of how, how dangerous are psychedelics, I think anybody, anybody who deals with them eventually comes up against this. Well, the question you have to ask is, to whom or to what? What is it that they threaten? I don't feel um, afraid of dying. I really think that if you die on a psychedelic, it probably is uh, a decision or the revelation of a cardiac dysrhythmia or something like that, and it could have happened to you jogging or swimming or in the baths, that, you know, some of us are delicately poised and we don't realize it until it's too late. The, the psychosis thing, there are two schools, uh, I think, at least two schools, and one school is, this is what is supposed to happen. You're supposed to take this and break down completely and yell and howl and flop on the floor and beg for mercy and have to be straight-jacketed and so forth. And then after nine or ten hours, uh, you're all right. And you say, wow, that really did me a lot of good. I really got... that was great. Well, I'm not of that school. And it may be... and I fully... I'm willing to fully entertain the possibility that I have a problem that this let it all hang out school is the way to go. My notion is that I, wa I want to understand it and I want to w sit quietly and I don't want to react against it and I don't want to push into it and I just say, you know, please be nice and show. That's what I say to it. I say, show thing, show, show what you know and then it begins to pull back the veils and reveal and it's a dialogue and I, I don't I, I really don't like losing control and I've come to see that as an issue for me I never have lost control except in situations where it was such a total loss of control that that was not an issue in other words there was no fighting <laughs> It just happened. Do. Yes, <laughs> and you know you can lose control. I've ex had experiences where something was going on. I came to awareness, and something was going on. And after a long, long time, I realized I'm a person. <laughs> I'm on a drug. <laughs> That's it. I'm a person on a drug. Now it's coming back to me. That's it. That's it. I'm in the middle of a trip. Jesus. And I didn't even, you know, wow. Well, this means, you know, I'm all, you're already on your way down at that point. <clears throat> but that's not a control issue. A control issue is, is when you don't want it and it still keeps coming. And, you know, it, humor is sometimes the only recourse. I mean, you just have to uh, say, you know, kill me already. It's <laughs> impossible. It's just impossible. 
Uh, I don't know, you think different things about this, I think, don't you? This is an area that we talk about a fair bit. Um, somewhat, yes. I, Terrence and I generally, for some few years now, uh, trip alone. I mean, not even together as a couple, although there have been many times but but this individual quiet what terence does the the searching uh asking is so rewarding to me n- that i i find myself going away your question about how to prepare for it i'll just tell you how i prepare i meet it with fear and with courage every time you know but the, the fear is always there and five grams is a serious step you know sometimes you're surprised and five grams was much less than you thought. Other times it's, you know, beyond the beyond. Uh, I go away to a cabin by myself for a few days and, uh, and try to keep my sense of humor before, during, and after. Be clean in terms of diet, but attitudes and shed whatever it is that I'm carrying around in my daily um, hassling or whatever and uh, ask, know that I'm not really alone in it. Because I think that that fear of really being totally alone in it is, is one of the things that overwhelms people. I um, don't call it thing, as Terence claims that he does, but I do find that, that uh, there's an, it is an entity. There are entities in it, whether it is one or it's just filled with many. But you can ask for the security of having one be the communicator with you. So in some cases, um, well, I always invoke something at the beginning, beforehand, someone that I can relate to. Uh, In some cases, it has been the great goddess of the ancients because she can take so many different forms. I leave that up to her. But I can ask for a voice or a face or a, a shower, you know, to be there. So, so it has more form to it because the, the total formlessness you meet sometimes in the middle of a trip it can be truly terrifying and confusing and not instructional. And then other times it's been an ancestor, an, a known ancestor, or, a, or whatever makes sense to you. Someone told me she always asks her grandmother to be there and uh, just do the channeling, you know. And whatever form you put to it has a, has a power, uh, sets up a field then that the information will have to contend with. And, and uh, I, over the last four or five years, I've just become um, very secure with that approach so that I trust the dose and I trust the situation, then what comes through during that experience is still uh, always the unexpected. But it's, that's fine. That's then what you learn, you know. And then there, many of us here, I think, have talked about techniques, but some of you are new to our discussions, so maybe not uh, a basic thing to say is the breathing is always very, very important. And anyone going into a trip of, on anything should know that conscious awareness of your breath and however you choose to do that will have the greatest modulating effect on the content of anything you can do. Sometimes it's just a simple following your inhaling and exhaling. Sometimes it becomes stronger or a blowing. And then there's singing, which we were talking about last night. It, it's the you know, the oxygen is a rush in itself. The sound is a dimension unto itself. It doesn't have to be a song with words or you don't have to be good at it. It just singing in that context just means letting your body manifest the vibration that you are perceiving. You're per- perceiving so many at once and your body wants to resonate with it and so it will if you just let it make sound. And that something about the sound and the oxygen combined is is so uh makes you at one with everything so these are these are techniques for dealing with the dread and the dread is terrifying you know and although many of us I mean, we wouldn't be so talk so interested in this talking about it if we hadn't had beautiful um dazzling and hilarious trips as well fortunately more of them seem to be that but 
if you're on a quest, you're going to meet dragons, you're going to meet everything, you know, and, and then it's good to know what to do when you meet those. I think that that's something that anybody who's concerned about preparation should be most concerned about is mindset. Mm-hmm. Well, it's almost as though the trip gives off a vibration backward through time before it happens. So, for instance, the evening, uh, you know, an hour before you're about to drop, you often feel as though you've already taken it. And if that feeling is unpleasant, you can violate the inevitability of the casuistry and not take it. You know, I mean... Well, many things are going on when you trip, I think, which is that you're, you're checking into your deepest self, but you're also... Um, taking a weather report on the cosmos for that moment, you know? And so you may be fine at that moment, but it is good, as Terence says, to check out what is the feeling of everything, what information came in subliminally to me today, whether it was on the news or something somebody told me, which set up a field that I've acted like wasn't important, and yet you can, we learn to tell the kinds of things which might overwhelm you once you get into that state. Do I want to be overwhelmed by that? Okay or not okay, you know? A lot of what you will encounter are are the moods of the world, of the atmosphere in the moment you take it. And that's part of the uh, can't always get what you want factor. And the more the more conscious you are before the experience, the easier it will be. There's an old Catholic trick that comes into play here. The way I usually do it is I, I take it and then it won't come on for like an hour, an hour and 20 minutes, but I sit in the dark that hour. Some people say, well, it's not going to come on for an hour, so let's, I've got this videotape I'd like you to see. And No, I just, as soon as I take it, I treat the situation as though I've entered the sacral space. And in the hour before it comes on, I usually manage to carry out a fairly detailed examination of conscience. This is the Catholic trick. You just, I I anticipate everything in my personality and world situation that might cause me to have a bad trip. Say, you know, well, you're cutting corners on this, and you really haven't squarely faced that, and so forth and so on. Well, by the time the thing actually comes on, you've usually processed most of this, and then you can just say, okay, now let her rip, you know? (laughs) But if you hadn't done that in the preceding hour, well, it might be waiting for you there. And I think most psychedelic researchers agree five out of ten New York psychedelic (laughs) researchers agree (laughs) that that the ordinary way that a person's psychedelic use develops is the first trips are the most unpredictable and the most self-involved. And that's when, you know, you remember when you were molested or this or that. It's all about you and your hang-ups and understanding your place in the world and, and what's going on. But if you press through that and continue experimenting with these things, nobody is so screwed up that that part of it can go on forever. Eventually, you begin to break out into a kind of generalized dimension where you say this isn't about me this has nothing to do with me this is the place the ancient books were talking about this is what religion and shamanism and myth is about in other words past the disentangling of the shock of a personal and unexamined personal unconscious is the more mystical and transcendental realms and a lot of people don't persist to reach that. They find the rubbing their nose in all of their own personal stuff so odious that they just call a halt right there and can't understand why anybody would take these things. 
mean, people say, you know, you do this for fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, not exactly. It's just the best form of entertainment that we know. Mm -hmm.